An advert criticizes the Muslim niqab and faces a massive backlash online. In other news, Apple updates its MacBook Air, Mac Mini and iPad Pro. And ramen rolls have come to Japan. Finally, new music from Dr. Dre and Sega show Nintendo and Sony how to make a classics bundle. I go by the name of Johnny Massacre and you are witnessing the Johnny Massacre show. Hello people, I did do the Johnny Massacre show yesterday but the sound was kind of cutting out intermittently, I have no fucking idea why, it was still happening this morning and I just fixed it by resetting all my software and hardware and also the video I made was banned anyways because I used some of Apple's adverts for their new products so Apple you're going to get it in the ass today, I'm not even going to be nice to you, I wasn't that nice to you yesterday but really today I'm just going to tell the truth about Apple's shitty new products. But first off, we're going to go political. We're going to talk about the niqab. Now, the niqab is a Muslim garb that covers the whole body of the woman. It just leaves a little slit for the eyes. And an advert online has criticized it and faced a backlash. This is a trend you see recently. If anyone criticizes anything about Muslims, there's a huge backlash by the social justice warriors who are looking to look like good people by denouncing other people, shaming other people. But look, let's be honest, right? We should be free to take the piss out of all religions. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, all that shit. Before this whole Muslim fiasco, people used to take the piss out of Christians all the time and Christians used to get really pissed off. And I love that because let's be honest, religion is a load of, well, it does have some good codes in it, but it's so manipulative, manipula manipulative and it brainwashes people. And it just doesn't make any sense in this world of science where science has brought us longevity, long life, long life and good health. Religion doesn't make any sense because if you put all your stock in religion and God to fix your problems, then you're totally fucked. But at the same time, I do get it. People need meaning in their life. They need some sort of something to just hold their hand through life and give them a reason to be alive. So people without God can often be quite miserable people. So this is a very, very interesting debate. But the point is, you should be able to take the piss out of anything in today's modern society, but you can't take the piss out of Islam. Now, I don't know a whole lot about Islam, but when I see the hijab, I think it makes women look like property. I know why they wear the hijab in uh, in many Muslim countries, and it's it's only worn in the presence of other males. So around your family and your husband, you don't have to wear the hijab, but outside in the presence of other males, you can't. And I just find that so weird. I, my analogy is a bit like a car, right? You have a car and you want to keep people's prying eyes away from it. So you put it in the garage at night because it's your property. So no one can see it or look lustfully at your car and get any ideas. Women are not the same as cars. You can't cover them up and hide them. They're not your personal property. They're people just like me and you. So the hijab, I'm not too sure about it. I've read articles that say the hijab is empowering, but I really don't think so. If you look at any country where the hijab has been abolished, it was at one point in Iran mate that the hordes the throngs of women that came out just throwing away their hijabs was amazing you should go check it out online google that iran getting rid of the hijab so i'm not too sure about it but i don't know enough about it to give it give an opinion that's worthwhile but the niqab is hijab taken to another level it's like kind of a letterbox style the whole woman is covered up and i'm sorry but that just makes Islam look kind of bad the way that they're treating women. So anyways, whether you think it's good or bad, I'm not saying you should ban it. I don't know enough about it for it to be banned or whatever, and it doesn't really concern me, but you should be able to take the piss out of it. And no one is free from having the piss taken out of them. That's what makes this country great, is you can say what you want without the secret police coming down and clubbing you over the head for wrong things. So an advert online has surfaced where they kind of, they make the, hit, the niqab look bad. And they say it's um, 
kind of taken away the freedom of women and there's been a massive backlash about it. So let's have a look at this article on the BBC. There's always these kind of articles about feminism and Muslims and blah, blah, blah on the BBC because it's obviously very popular. These articles are hot topics right now and everyone's debating about it. You've got people on one side saying oh, it's all bollocks and then people on the other side saying, no, it's not bollocks, I'm right, you're wrong. So these articles are very popular, unfortunately. So look at this, BBC trending, Israeli freedom is basic, niqab advert criticized. So let's see why this ad was criticized. The ad asks, is Iran here as Israeli supermodel Bar Raffaele wears a niqab? Well, first off, if everyone wore these things, there would be no supermodels and we couldn't appreciate female beauty. So that's one strike against the niqab in my book. An advert for an Israeli clothing company which shows a woman ripping off a niqab and headscarf has been heavily criticised online. I guess if you had a Christian tearing off the cross and throwing it away, there would also be a little bit of an outrage, but not as much as the Muslim thing, because right now Muslims are very high on the victim hierarchy in the media, and everyone can just look like good people by denouncing anything that criticizes Islam. When Islam criticizes a lot of the basic freedoms of the West itself, we should be able to freely criticize everything, people, without getting your knickers in a twist. It's all right. Calm down. The ad for clothing brand Hoodies opens with a caption reading, Is Iran here? and shows Israeli supermodel Bar Raffaele wearing a face veil. Mrs. Raffaele then removes the niqab and dances before a voiceover states, Freedom is basic. The video has been viewed thousands of times on various social media platforms and has triggered outrage and attracted accusations of Islamophobia. So this kind of paints the picture that in Iran, women kind of want their freedom. They don't want to be covered up. They just want to be normal people and go outside without being controlled by men and treated like property. That's what this advert seems to be about. And that's a bad thing. Someone doesn't want to be religious and cover up. I just don't get it. The social justice warriors are eating themselves. It comes at a time of rising tension between Israel and Iran. Many took to social media to express their disappointment and anger at the advert. My disappointment in you is immeasurable, says one random person on Twitter. Another person says, another person who's, is she wearing? No, I don't know. She looks a bit SJ dub with her dyed hair. All this ad has achieved, and ad is spelt incorrectly, is incite more ignorant hate and further perpetuate the Western ideology that Muslim women are oppressed Fire your creative directors and pull this embarrassment. So what I want to know is, is the niqab not oppressive? Is covering, is covering a woman from head to toe in black cloth so no other men can see her in case she's going to get shagged by the men? Is that okay? Is, can, can someone please give me a supporting argument for this niqab? Because I really, I don't see what it is. So yeah, this is kicking off right now. And... Before people jump on my back about criticizing Islam, let's, let me criticize some other religions. So I think we should be free to criticize every religion. Let me uh, criticize Judaism for a second. Now, do you know what's really fucked up about Jewish culture is that they cut skin off babies' penises because of religion. Now, if there's a God and if that's what God wants, then hey, shoot me. I'm sorry. But... I don't believe in God. And if there is no God, that means that thousands of people are cutting the skin off their baby's penises for no reason. Now, I can accept that sometimes people need to be circumcised for medical reasons. So this isn't like a huge deal. I don't think it's taking away your basic freedoms or anything, but there is some part of Jewish culture which is a little more extreme, where the person who's doing the circumcision sucks the blood off the baby's penis with his mouth. No, I'm not making this up. This is true. And therefore, some babies have been known to die from contracting herpes from the mouth of the person who's sucking the blood off the penis. And that's fucked up. I don't think anyone should fucking do that. See, I can criticize this part of Jewish culture, but I cannot criticize any part of Muslim culture. What, what do you want? Do you want to be treated equally, in which case you should be open to the same criticism everyone else is open to? Or do you want special treatment? Because nobody deserves special treatment. If you want to be equal, you have to be open to being treated equally. And that might be positive. You'll be treated like everyone else or you will be admonished like everybody else. And that is how it should be. But in the media, I see this all the time. People want to be equal and then when they're criticized on the same equal ground as everyone else then suddenly they don't want to be treated equal 
How do you want it? I'm sorry, if you want equal treatment, if you want equality, you have to be able to be criticized. That's the whole point. That is the foundation of Western culture, the best culture, the free culture, the culture that made all the best movies, music, and things in the world. Let me just show you a little bit of this stuff, um, <coughs> this Jewish practice. And this is obviously not widespread. This is very niche, but it does, it does actually happen in the world. So have a look at this. Oh, it's telling me if I want to read more, then I have to subscribe. So fuck that. Okay, I'll just read it to you off, off uh, a Google search. The ancient method of performing metzitsa bepeh, or oral suction, has become controversial. The process has the mohel place his mouth directly on the circumcision wounds to draw from the baby to draw blood away from the cut. The majority of Jewish circumcision ceremonies do not use it, but some Haredi Jews use it. So this is not widespread, but this obviously is quite old school. Some of the risks include spreading herpes to the infant. Proponents maintain that there is no conclusive evidence that links herpes to metzitsa, and that attempts to limit this practice infringe on religious freedom. But this just seems very old school, cutting a baby's penis and sucking blood off it. It seems a little bit extreme. And in the same way, the, the niqab for Muslims covering up everything, it really, is that, is that a good thing for women? Is that... Is that really a good, are they happy? Do they really want to do that? That's the question. That's what I want to know. So maybe you can convince me. I don't know. But I just feel that you should be free to criticize anything. And when we start getting into this, this culture where certain things cannot be criticized, then one day you will find yourself not being able to criticize any of the ideology of the ruling party. And if that ruling party says things like, you have to think this way, you have to believe something like this, then we're in a lot of fucking trouble. Then we're just going to be like China and even worse. I don't want to over-exaggerate, but North Korea, that's an extreme example of where you can't say certain things or you're not supposed to believe certain things and you certainly can't criticize certain things or you're going to go to jail and a gulag. And we don't want to go down that route. The, the best way was from the 90s where it's like you could say what the fuck you want and do what the fuck you like and people wouldn't cry about it. And we should just... We should kind of focus on much more serious issues. N uh, yeah, it, it winds me up a little bit, but there's such a lack of communication about this because people are just so outraged about it. I'm trying to talk about it quite reasonably now. I would like to know your thoughts about it and what you people think about it. And I always am up for being educated. I'm not ignorant like that. I don't bury my head in the sand, but you have to kind of be very selective about what you read online especially on twitter because mostly it's just sj dubs trying to look like good people by shaming other people anyways rambling now let's get away from the politics right macbook air mac mini and ipad pro are out fuck all of these products okay so i looked yesterday at the launch trailers and reacted to them on the johnny massacre show that never was and honestly mates these products fucking suck let after the first ad, I predicted what the second ad would say, and I was exactly right. For all of these products, it's thinner, it's lighter, it's got our best processor yet, it has our highest resolution screen, and the metal is made from some ridiculous psychobabble vocabulary that's sure to impress you and motivate you to buy the product. That's all there is. There's no innovation at all. It's a very sad day for Apple, a company once famed for its innovation and forward thinking. Think Different was its slogan that summed it up quite nicely. It's now just churning out the same shit after same shit again and again and again and again. The interesting thing was the iPad Pro has a real version of Adobe Photoshop, but that's not what iPad users want. Don't try to sit on the fence and straddle the pro market and consumer market. The iPad is for consumer, make it for them, that's it. The pro market is for pros, keep that software for them. When you start putting Photoshop on iPad, you scare the shit out of people like me who rely upon pro hardware to make music and make um, and design shit and edit video because once you start making that a thing on consumer products it looks as if you're trying to shift away from these pro products which 
generate a fraction of the revenue of your consumer products. And if we end up having to use Photoshop and pro editing software for music, video and images on iPad, it's just going to be worse. It's going to be slightly more consumer driven and watered down. And you know what? I could be wrong, but I think having the lion's share of the world's creatives using Apple, even though it doesn't generate you the same amount of income as it does with your consumer products like the iPhone and the iPad, is a very, very valuable thing. You want the geniuses and creative minds of this generation and the next one to be using Apple hardware. So even if you're taking a hit from that, you need to do it. And Apple just don't get it. They used to illuminate the Apple logo on the back of their MacBook. So all of the world's best DJs had that fucking Apple logo under their nose when they were DJing. But what did they do with the new MacBook Pros? They didn't illuminate the Apple anymore. How dumb can you be? That's free advertising from the coolest artists in the world. There are big brands falling over themselves to get their logo next to these DJs and trendsetters and Apple blew it. And that just shows you they don't really understand their pro market. So Apple, fuck you. You're boring the shit out of me. Look at this piece of shit iPhone. I always used to get the, the new iPhone, the best one on the block. I couldn't give a flying fuck anymore because it's the same shit. Like I said, it's thinner, it's lighter. It's the highest resolution yet. And we've taken away a load of shit. Now we don't have a headphone port. Fuck it. Why don't you just take away the screen and give me a plastic brick, motherfuckers? Fuck you, Apple. Okay, let's go on to the next piece of news today, which is ramen rolls have come to Japan. Ramen sandwiches basically so this is actually not a huge deal because there is already some kind of bread related noodle snack available in japan that's been around for the last 50 years i guess and you often find it in service stations and it's called a soba roll so yakisoba contains noodles but they're not like ramen noodles they're buckwheat noodles they're a bit healthier and sometimes people destroy this healthy food by covering it in this sticky sweet sauce it is quite nice and frying it and Japanese service stations often take those sticky fried noodles and put them in a bun. So this is nothing too crazy. But I know that this shit is popular in the West, these fusions of cuisines and stuff. So now you can get this ramen roll in Japan. I read an article online. The author tried it. I mean, look, let's just have a, a quick look at the picture. Here it is, the ramen roll. It's from a cafe called Happy Buns. And inside you can see the noodles, a bit of Welsh onion or Japanese onion. Japanese people will try to lay claim to this onion. You see an egg there, and this is called narito. This is a fish paste made into a kind of chewy slice with some food coloring in there. So they said it, it tasted pretty good. And I just think there are about 50 hipsters now watching this show already planning to open a ramen roll store in downtown Brooklyn. Would you eat a ramen roll? Does that even sound appetizing at all? Now, next, there might be some new music from Dr. Dre coming. How do we know this? Well, there's a few articles popping up online because Eminem has this movie coming out that he's produced called Bodied, which apparently is a, a kind of a comedy about freestyling and rap and whatever. And in a recent Instagram video, a producer teased that rap icon Eminem is gearing up to release the soundtrack for Bodied. And even more exciting, it seems that the soundtrack could include Dr. Dre. Enemy says the rumors began when James Larice, director of Eminem's Lucky You music video, shared a series of online posts that looked curiously like the plans for a yet to be revealed music video. And you can see it down here. This video director is releasing this next to a plate of food, a shot list and where the video is going to be shot. They've already just shot a video like this for the Venom song which was for the uh, Venom OST by Eminem. They shot this video on top of the Empire State and it was raining and really gritty. And I think they used a GoPro or a shitty cam cut up with a good camera. And even with the good camera, the lighting conditions were so bad, but it looked amazing. It looked kind of gritty and real. And it just was an amazing video. And it clearly wasn't the highest budget, although it did have a fair budget. So I think they're trying to take that concept and take it to the next level with this. Whether it features Dr. Dre, I don't know. But the point is, I fucking love Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre broke through Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, Eminem, and of course himself. And he's one of the best music producers of all time, one of my heroes. We, we never got the Chronic album we all wanted, the sequel to Chronic 2001. We got some album called Compton, which was absolute shit. And some of the, the tracks from the album that never came, Detox from Dr. Dre, oh my God, there's one of them online you can hear on YouTube. You can hear on YouTube. 
it is one of the coolest fucking tunes ever and you know what i might just bring it up now because it, it it's a travesty this song was never released and basically what i'm trying to say is i just fucking love dr dre and i hope he does have some new song out this week that eminem's rapping over but before we do let me just hype you a little bit for a potential new dr dre uh track this week here it is and some fucker recorded this on their camera phone which is probably why it never came out isn't this the sickest fucking tune you've ever fucking heard here we go unreleased track from detox oh fuck can you hear this can you hear this music Oh my fucking god why didn't they fucking release that tune and why didn't they release the detox album this has gone from a news report on a potential new dr dre track to a fucking rant about why they never released that song it's fucking amazing anyways i do hope there's a new dr dre track this week the script that this director leaked had the initials dd on it so it says dd appears which could stand for dr dre that might mean he didn't produce it though he's just appearing in the video to co-sign eminem but please i hope there's a new dr dre produced track out this week featuring eminem now last on today's show sega show nintendo and sony how to make a classic bundle so we've had the NES classic we've had the Super NES classic and they were pretty good I have to be honest the Sony classic the PlayStation classic the games were pretty good but they were missing quite a lot so let's again recap on what you're gonna get on the PlayStation classic which is out in the first week of December so the lineup includes Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy 7, Grand Theft Auto, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, and titles like Mr. Driller, Odd World, and Rayman that nobody gives a fuck about. So let's have a look at what Sega are releasing on the Genesis Classics for the Switch. Now these are games that people really want to play. Check this out. Alex Kidd in Enchanted Castle. Frustrating but classic game. Alien Soldier. Fucking amazing side-scrolling shooting, shoot em up, beat em up. Alien Storm. Fucking amazing classic, if not a little bit limited, colourful, well-animated side-scrolling shooter beat em up. Altered Beast. Classic. Biohazard Battle. That is a very niche shooting game where you're shooting plants and weird mutated things, which is just fucking awesome that not too many people know about. It's a great inclusion in this bundle. Bonanza Brothers, the nostalgia's killing me. Probably hasn't aged very well, but a great game where you have to collect shit and rob banks and stuff like that. That was amazing. Columns, classic puzzle games. Comic Zone, classic beat em up. Dynamite Heady, Fucking Beyond Classic, that's by Treasure, one of the best 2D developers ever. Eswat, City Under Siege, an amazing 80s classic inspired by Robocop. Fucking amazing. This is just brilliant collection. Um, let me just make sure this video isn't playing because I don't want to don't want to fucking trash this stream so golden axe one two and three not just one all of them see on the playstation classic you've only got one of each why not have one two and three give the people what they want of course they want to drip feed you to release another one down the line but don't be fucking greedy sony for goodness sake you're gonna make me rant gunstar heroes another classic by treasure kid chameleon a, another, a game which probably hasn't aged well but Again, it's the classic. You get different kinds of helmets. You get a rhino helmet and stuff. It changes your powers. What else we got? Fantasy Star, Shadow Dancer, Shining in the Darkness, all the Shinobi, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3. Give me all of the Streets of Rage. Toe Jam and Earl, classic game. Even the sequel to Toe Jam and Earl, which was quite niche. Toe Jam and Earl and Funkatron, Virtua Fighter 2. I mean, 
You couldn't want more. They've given fans exactly what they want. But in contrast, Sony have dropped the ball a little bit with that release. Why? Well, look, let me tell you a few things that Sony should have added to this. So, okay, firstly, have a look at this game. They should have added ESPN Extreme Games. Check this out. So look, the graphics are really good in this. They were really, really smooth when they came out. I mean, obviously by today's standards, they're poor, but it actually moves quite smoothly. So this was mind blowing when it came out. It had quite good draw distance as well. You can see all the way at the end of the screen, unlike a lot of Sega games at the time on the rival Sega Saturn system. And the sounds are great. Listen to this. Ooh, whoosh. So you can ride bikes, you can ride a luge, which is much faster. And I love the way when you hit shit, you go, boo, boo. Very violent. So it's like Road Rash, but 3D. So this was a very, very cool game indeed. So they should be putting kind of niche games like this on there, much like Sega have done with their upcoming classic Switch bundle. Also, Cool Borders 1 is on the PlayStation Classic, but not, but uh, is not on the PlayStation Classic, but they put Cool Borders 2. Now look at this. Now, both of them look like utter shit by today's standards, I have to be honest, but Cool Borders 1 was way better than Cool Borders 2, trust me. Even its very poorly animated intro was more charismatic than that entire game. So look at this. Web systems. And the cheesy voiceover is brilliant. And look at this horrible CGI that they used to put on before games started. It's mad, the current PlayStation can do better graphics than that, and at the time they used some insane computer workstation the size of a warehouse to generate that. Borders. I love the way it's the, the kind of dude narrating the, the game as well. This was great. There's something about this which was just, it was charming and it was addictive. You have to play it to understand it. But anyways, that was better. But look, why can't you satisfy everyone, Sony, and put Cool Borders 1, 2, and fuck it, why not even 3 on there like Sega has? So I think Sega's new upcoming classic bundle puts the PlayStation stuff to shame. The thing is, this is coming out for the Switch. It's not coming out on a mini console like the PlayStation. So maybe it's a bit unfair to compare, but this is the kind of thing Sega should be putting onto their classic consoles in the future. Classic Sega set and classic Sega Dreamcast, sign me up. But let's just have a, another quick look at this news about um, the Sega Classic. So I'll give you the facts. It launches December the 7th for the Switch. And that's it. So just get ready to download it. Let's have a quick look at the games. Let's take a trip down memory lane and feel nostalgic. I'm loving the music. Five stars for whoever was commissioned to do this. Challenges as well, that's nice, adding longevity to the game. Very welcome. And that's it, I think. Short and sweet. So yeah, Sega is winning. So that's about enough news for today. Let's now talk about my life, shall we? I've got a bit of a sore throat today. God bless me, but I'm not exactly suffering too bad. What's going on in my life? I saw Paul McCartney play live yesterday and it was just super emotional for me um, because he's 76 and all I was thinking about, I had these intrusive thoughts saying over and over again, he's gonna die, he's gonna die. And he represents such a big part of my life. He influenced me with his band, The Beatles, immeasurably my sound the way i make music the way i think about music is is probably 30 percent of that is down to the beatles and george martin it's the heaviest music ever made it's heavier than drum and bass it's heavier than dubstep it's the real deal 
it's bizarre it's unique it's original it's edgy it's melodious it's memorable it's colorful it's beautiful it's meaningful i mean there's there's no end of superlatives you can use to describe the beatles stuff and seeing someone like that who i could almost conflate with my own identity his existence is intertwined with mine being old and all and nearly dead is very, very depressing and sad. That sounds like a brutal thing to say, but I think a lot of people were thinking that in the audience because, yeah, you, you have this image of Paul McCartney as this young, kind of handsome, famous, talented person, and then you're seeing his older version. And um, of course, people are going to think that way. So it felt emotional. And my dad loves the Beatles, so I also conflate Paul McCartney's existence with my dad and my family and growing up and just my life in general. And so it makes me think about life. It makes me feel grateful to be alive. It makes me feel grateful to have my family. And it makes me kind of think about how short life is and how people, all the people I know, friends and family are going to die one day. So it, it's kind of a crazy negative thing to think about, but not things people don't think about all the time. And I'm happy to talk about that on the Johnny Massacre show. So I just felt mortal and appreciative to see such a legend and it's mad he had a new album out this year which went to number one which sounds like kind of what it is a 76 year old guy just talking about his life and it's all quite tame i don't like the new songs much but he's still got it he's still got it his voice warbles quite a lot like an old person does so he's kind of missing the notes all the time but he's still got it he still can he still can make a performance i was putting my fingers in my ears not because i didn't want to hear it but because I, I wanted to hear it to get rid of all the bass and distortion and stuff and listening to it like that i could hear he was missing quite a few notes but it was still it was still decent and what an amazing guy. He, he played the guitar, he played the bass, he played the piano, he's just Mr. Music and it's so beautiful and British. And that's why I hate all this socialist stuff, we wanna remove all borders, because I like the way British is British. On the screen they had red coats and army people and British stuff and people liked that. And do you know what? At the event, I had my Japanese flag on my arm as a British person and there were shitloads of Japanese people wearing British flags. So it's like, don't try to destroy cultures or get rid of them. Respect them, adopt them for a day, wear the flag and do as they do. When in Rome, do as the Romans do, respect the culture. And that's how things should be. I don't want to have this just one nation thing where we're all together and, and we just like dilute everything. It doesn't make sense. but. The point is, we should have our own identity, which gives us meaning and, and some form of pride. And that's not, that's, that's not negative at all. That is a beautiful thing. And that's where, what has got us where we are today. But at the same time, we need to be open to cross pollinate and let other cultures in and while they respect the culture, and then we can kind of create new things and, and get new influences and stuff. So rambling a bit, but it was a great show and it was a great show of unity by various people coming together regardless of where they're from we were all there for the same reason so that was fucking good i really enjoyed that um so yeah i'm gonna get on with my day you will get another johnny massacre show within 12 hours because of yesterday's technical problems and i'm glad you tuned in i will make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed the show support me on patreon.com forward slash johnny massacre follow me on the twitters twitter.com forward slash johnny massacre and the insta instagram.com forward slash massacre johnny see you tomorrow people